with such a heart of thanksgiving to the Lord. And not because of food or anything like that, but just the fact that God has been good to me. He, he, he has been more than amazing to me. And I was um, laying here today and, and thinking about a lot of things. I just left Chicago doing the 75th anniversary. And like many of you that are watching today, I was so overwhelmed with emotion. And um, my grandmothers on both sides of my family were members of that church and helped to build the foundation of what that church represented. So all of my aunts and uncles on both sides of the family and um, my dad, my mom, and to stand in that place where I first said my Easter speech where they brought me to church for the first time as a baby. And I was having so many emotions while I was ministering because the memories were just flashing all over the place. And I'm talking about 30 or more members of my family are no longer with us. And it was very emotional for me. The night I got done ministering, I went back to the hotel and I just, I think the last thing I remember, I woke up the next morning with all my clothes on. And I just wanted to come on today because I know people, people are feeling that same emotion where your loved ones aren't here and, and you miss them. And this is such a hard time, but, and I'm not gonna be on here long, but in the midst of that, the Lord comforted me. And um, the scripture that he gave me made so much sense to me that I could not resist coming on here and sharing this with you. Um, as I go up and down the page and I see where people have lost their sons and lost their mothers and their, their sisters and their brothers. And you say, what do I do with this emotion? Um, because the choice is to stay in the grief of it or understand the purpose of it. And it's one thing that I didn't understand. Uh, my mother is is older now and um, not the person she once was. And so sometimes all of that confusion can hit your mind to the point that you just feel like, well, is everybody going to die? Or is, is, is everybody going to leave me? And then all of those fears come where you start pre-anticipating people not being here. And coupled with who's already gone, it's too much. And I said to the Lord, just give me comfort. And I'm not talking about comfort to feel better because we have to be careful. And I think I've, I've ministered this to you all so many times about trusting the emotions and trusting that what I feel emotionally is going to be enough to sustain me. And the majority of the time it's not because emotions are fleeting. One minute you feel like I'm going to be all right and the next minute, you know, you bought up on the couch. I know. I know. And so when it gets like that, you have to really just ask the Lord, I need comfort from you. And I don't want some pseudo type of comfort you know, where it, 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 it stimulates my adrenaline for the moment. But as I just said, it's not sustaining because what we need in this hour is sustaining power, not fleeting power. We don't need an emotional shot in the arm. We need something that's going to anchor us and anchor us in a way that no matter what happens, I'm confident 
and what God says about my life and what God says about my future. I'm confident in this, that he makes no mistakes. Um, he makes no mistakes. All of his choices are right. All of his choices are purposeful. So how am I sustained? And so he took me to the scripture in the book of Colossians, the first chapter, and the 24th through the 26th verse. And here, Paul is expressing this same type of pain, this same type of grief, as you would call it. Um, because don't forget, coupled with the emotions of loss, some of you on this page are going through your own personal transition. And it becomes, how much more can I take? How much more can I take? And when the Lord gave me, what well, matter of fact, when pastor asked me to preach this Sunday, I was like, are you sure? And he was like, no, I just feel like God want to birth the word. And when God gave me the fruit of your lips, the power of the fruit of your lips, it's connected to so much more than talking. And for some of you that are coming to the uh, revival, you'll understand that better by and by. But the comforting part was when Paul said in the Amplified Bible, even now I rejoice in the midst of my sufferings. And I know that sounds like a dichotomy. How can you rejoice when you are in the midst of suffering? How can I give thanks to the Lord when in our ways, as some of us say, he took my family, he took my children, he took my, my, my mother. How can I, and, and some of you all, the way that they, they uh, left and transitioned. How can I rejoice? How can I rejoice in this suffering? But he said, even now I rejoice in the midst of my sufferings on your belief, on your behalf. And in my own person, in my own person, after I've been a preacher, in my person, because we all have that person, regardless of how anointed we are, we all have that person outside of our jobs, outside of who we are to other people. When we get alone, we are our own person. And what about that person? Because sometimes you can be so busy satisfying and, and giving gratification to everybody else. But when you get alone, what about my person? Am I okay? And I said to the Lord, I'm not. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I've been hanging on the couch since I got home. I'm not okay. So what about my person? And then he said, I am making up. Here it is. I am making up whatever is still lacking and remains to be completed on our part of Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. So Dr. Bynum explained that. Paul is saying, Jesus is gone. He's gone. And probably during this time in the text, there were other people that were gone. And people that he was told about, like the Abrahams that he probably never got a chance to meet. So in the midst of my suffering, my job on their behalf is to still, it's whatever is still lacking. Because nobody left you without ever having a conversation with you. Nobody left you without at some point at a kitchen table or a dining room table or in a car or on the, on, at, in the park or sitting in the living room talked about their dreams. They talked about what they would desire to see happen. And some of them had even started that work. So then Dr. Bynum, even my own uncle asked me this. He said, Niece, why did it seem like God took your father and my sisters and everybody that had strong spiritual meaning and influence in the world? But I'm just, I'm left here. And I was never a preacher or anything like that. 
and it came back to me for him too because whatever is still lacking and remains to be completed on our part because there is an assignment that is given to every family lineage and no one person is going to be the sum total of the completion of that assignment. There is a purpose that is given to every family. And when they are gone, just like Jesus, when they are gone, then the part of them that remains, you have to make up the slack, make sure that nothing is lacking, and you are called to complete what they started. Somebody said, well, you know what? I just wish I can just keep their memory alive. It's not about blooms. It's not about keeping the memory alive just because you go to the grave site and put flowers down. Or because you put their picture up and sing happy birthday to daddy. Or I wish he was here so we're going to save his, his chair at the head of the table. Because they were about none of those things when they were alive. They were about what they wanted to do. And trust me, they hated to leave us. But their portion of the work was done. And now the responsibility is not for us to keep grieving. But whatever is still lacking on behalf of the body that used to be in this earth realm. We are to complete it and do our part. And as I began to look that weekend, I had an opportunity to visit my mom's house and the house was full of my, my, my nieces and my nephews and everybody was there. And I was sitting down talking to Adrian um, when I came on, you heard this song called West. It's a new release of hers, my niece, and she had been working on this project for some time. And I've had this on my laptop almost nonstop until the Lord just took me up yesterday in, in prayer and, and praise. And I just, you know, when he gave me the word, he, he caught my spirit. And I was telling her, I'm sitting here and my grandmother is gone and my dad is gone. And now I'm looking at the next generation. But I'm going to tell you what the scripture said that really, really confirmed this. It said in the 25th verse, somebody said, well, why am I supposed to complete this? Why am I supposed to complete a foundation in their name? If your son liked basketball, then why don't you do a basketball camp in his name? Do a not-for-profit in his name. Complete it. Let there be something left in the earth realm that is the legacy of your family so that their living was not in vain. Am I helping anybody today? So what is the object of this? The object is in the 25th verse, that you may know the Lord and the word of the Lord. Are you hearing this? I must complete and take up the slack and whatever is lacking that my aunts and my uncles and my father and my grandparents left behind so that my nieces and nephews that sat in front of me in that kitchen can know the Lord. Because the Bible said there arose a generation that knew not the Lord and I'm looking at this. I'm looking at one of my young nieces saying to my older niece, um, Adrian, I really, your speech helped me. So I looked at her and I said, a speech? And she, and, and, and she said, yes, Adrian's speech. And so I said, Adrian, what speech did you do? And Adrian said, oh, I preached on this message. I said, are you talking about preaching? She said, yes. And right then it all stopped making sense. She's calling it a speech. When it really wasn't a speech, it was an impartation of the word of the Lord. So do you see how from generation to generation, things are being lost in translation? Where after a while, 
if we're not careful, there will be a generation coming behind your son and your son's children that will act as if, who is God? Who is God? I mean, church, worship, you look and you see how some of the kids just sit in church because something is being lost in the translation. Because while we're grieving who left, there's cracks in the foundation. And some things that are vital for this next generation is being lost in translation while we are grieving. Are you hearing this? I didn't plan to come on today, but I had to because it said here, why? Because somebody said, oh, well, my father preached some of the greatest messages or my uncle preached some of the greatest messages or, you know, in time past, I've heard some of the greatest messages, but the scripture said that I must take up the slack, whatever is lacking. My, my, my aunt, one of my oldest aunts, who's, I believe she's 90, sat me down after I got done preaching and I sat down next to her on the front row of the church. And she went in on me, telling me, reminding me of who I am and the fact that the mantle of my father and my grandmother and my aunts is in us. And she said, Nita, and you got to carry this gospel and you got to carry it the way we put it in you and you can't change it. You can't change. Don't get out there trying to do some fluff, fluff preaching. You have to carry that mantle to the next generation or there will be a great loss. You think your father being gone is a loss. Some of you think your grandmother being gone is a loss or my uncle is a loss or my pastor is a loss. And I'm watching how two pastors died this week on Facebook. You think that's a loss? The loss is so much greater. If the people of God keep grieving and not press on to pick up the slack of whatever is lacking and complete the assignment, pick up the baton. Are you hearing this? Or your family don't win. The enemy wins. I used to run track in high school. I used to run track, my sister and I, up at the park. And, and my father, one of, a, one of my most memorable memories, I wanted to run. And he said, not now, you can't join the track team. And my sister Janice was fast as lightning. And I kept saying, why can't I run? Why you won't let me compete? He said, because I don't think you're ready. I said, Daddy, I am ready. He said, no. He said, I think you can run fast, but I don't think you're ready. And so he would come home from work, come in the house and get me. And he said, when I count to three, I'm going to race you to the end of the block. And until you can beat me, you're not ready for that part. And so he would say, one, two, three, and we would take off running. And I would be giving it all I got. And I couldn't understand why I was younger than he were, was I could, I was fast, but I couldn't beat my father. He had street shoes on. I had tennis shoes on. He had, sometimes he would race me in his suit. Why can't I beat him? And it finally hit me one day. I can't beat him because I was too focused on who I was running against. His image to me was unbeatable. So until I can transfer things in my mind, I can never win the race. And when I got that, I start beating him every time. And he said, okay, now you ready to run against anybody over there. What am I saying? Who wants somebody that's on the team that'll keep dropping the baton? That spends more time crying than you do producing. Yes, it hurts. My aunt was like my, sh oh my God. She taught me in Sunday school. She taught me in YPWW. Some of you Church of God in Christ, you know what that was. She was like 
a beacon of light. She got saved in that church at 17. When she died, she was 70. All I've ever known about my Aunt Frances was Jesus and the love of God. And so when, when she left, it was like something was snatched out of me. I can't even explain it. But I can't sit here and just grieve. Or I do her name no honor. You can't sit there and just cry. Or you do their life no honor. There was a job that they set out to do. Some of your fathers were mechanics and said, you know what, if I, I just wish I had my own shop. And you sitting there with money and can open up a shop and give somebody else a chance. My father's legacy was always helping people. My grandmother's legacy was always helping people. My mother's legacy was I, I would do anything in the world for you. I didn't just get like this. It's an inheritance. It's a part of my family lineage. We are naturally born giving people. So then here is the punchline in the scripture in the 26th verse. Why must we make sure that we finish the job and make sure nothing is lacking and completed? Not just so that you can know God and not just so you can know the word. It goes a little further than that. It said that the mysteries hidden for ages and generations. The mysteries of God was hidden for ages and generations, which means there's some things that God is going to reveal in you, the lineage that he did not reveal to them. There are mysteries and hidden mysteries from ages to generation, but is now revealed to the holy people, the saints. God is ready to give you the revelation that he did not give your father. God is ready to use us to be the revelation of the mysteries of God that was hidden from generation to generation. And if we don't make a decision to pick up the slack and complete what they started, then we will have no mysteries and no revelations to pass on to the next generation. And they will become the walking dead at your expense. Are you hearing this today? I look around and, and, and like my pastor said, we're the church mothers now. We're the bishops and the pastors now. And I got to make sure that Everybody that come on this page, I don't take this page for granted. Maybe some people just pop up like popcorn and, you know, I want to be on here. Y'all come on in. I, I can't. I can't. If God ain't talking, I'm not talking. If God not speaking, I'm not speaking. I can only come on when God says, there's something I need you to say. Because I know that this is just not a Facebook page. I'm raising a generation. I'm raising a generation. There's an army on this page. That if I slack, if I don't complete what God has given me from my forefathers, I have nothing to pass on to you but good ideas, but not revelation, not a word that will sustain you and anchor you. So behind this word, I may cry, but I know that my tears are part of my emotions, and that's fleeting. But the word that God has given me today is my sustaining power. It is my commission. My commission, meaning the job that I was given to do. You can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. Somebody said, well, my family wasn't nothing. Then it's your job. To make sure that whatever was lacking in your father, in your mother, in your brothers, in your aunts and your uncles, that you turn it around. 
that you, like the book of Psalms said, become the royal diadem. The scripture said, God calls a royal diadem in every family. In every family, there is one or two people that God is going to call to be the glue. That God is going to call to make sure that that get right spirit stay in you. My Nana is that person on my mother's side. I don't care how grown we get. Gene Smothers. If I say, no, I'm going to tell Nana. Everybody starts saying, well, wait, wait, let me just explain because she takes no prisoners. That's on my mother's side. Everybody got that person. But when her mother passed on, her mother was that person in my side of the family. Now she's that person. Are you hearing this? Nobody gets away. Nobody gets an opportunity to just walk in the park picking tulips. Not when you have a body that used to be in this world that bears your DNA and your blood. There's a responsibility and you would never get a release from the pain until you start operating in the purpose that was left behind. My God, purpose is calling you. Somebody said, well, how do I know purpose is calling me? If there was a spiritual mother, a spiritual father, a God sister, a God brother, an uncle, an aunt, a grandmother, a grandfather, a mother, a father, a sister, or brother. A cousin, a second cousin twice removed, as they said down south. If you've ever known anybody that has carried a torch for God, if you were ever connected with anybody that carried a torch for the word of God, if you ever were connected to anybody that you heard revelation come out of them. If you were connected to anybody that you could testify that they left us too soon and that you wasn't ready and they were too young and it was too quick or it was too sudden or they suffered too long, then that's who's calling you. To make sure that nothing is lacking and that you complete the work on behalf of that body that was left here. Because in you, my brothers and sisters, and all of those that call themselves my children, to you, all of my bees, sitting inside of you, the whole earth is in travail, waiting. For the mysteries and the hidden revelations that were hidden from generation to generation to now be revealed to you that remain. Happy Thanksgiving. God bless you.